Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Prototype. This is not a suitable place to be starting off a mission when you're loading up your game, although this is one of the many t places where you do start. But in terms of the specific time that we're playing in this game, well, this is not really good, especially when we're ne next to a hive and hunters are everywhere, but it does give me something interesting in order to discuss, which is the hive in question, because it looks slightly different. This hive is actually indestructible. You cannot destroy it through conventional means. Why? Well, that's a car. The cars work more well on us than, well, they do on the hive, but we'll actually figure that out, why they can't be destroyed by regular means, in the mission that we're actually going to go into. And this is also not the only hive that can't be destroyed conventionally. The other two hives that are in this large infected area with the big building that apparently Dana's inside, those also can't be destroyed. So let's get more powerful. Upgrade time. Our final three upgrades that we have to get include a very useful abil ability, which makes the Whip Fist a lot more useful. The Long Shot Grab. I won't be really showing it off in this video that much or at all because well this mission doesn't really use it all that well it's more handy for like outside um, missions a lot because it makes your grab incredibly useful and it's even better than flying kicking everywhere but the other two upgrades that we have to get is the air ground spike graveyard devastator which I'm surprised I went this far into the game without getting because Sometimes off-camera, I've been trying to use it and then had to remember that I don't actually have it. But the Air Critical Pain Devastator is what is going to be really helpful, not in this mission in particular, but really soon in the future. And that gives us all our combat for the time being until we get some more upgrades, and there are still more. I also didn't show this off last time. We finished Sequence 6 because we got the last two nodes, which were both leader hunters, different leader hunters. S starting with sequence six, you're going to be getting into spoiler territory in terms of what um, people you're going to be consuming, especially in sequence eight and nine. Those are where the big um, consumption targets are going to be that are really important. But anyway, back to the game at hand. We have to rescue Dana from apparently the big building over there, and the military is going to help us do that. Because apparently they have some big new weapon to show us. And us to steal. Red Crown to Sigma Command. Secure all locations at Stadium Control Zone. Prepare assault teams at north and southwest points of entry. Incursion Team 19 is mobile. 12 working up from beneath the stadium. Out. We need to hit the online hive before the main assault. It's one the hammer. We can't let it go down. Delta Quad, move up and take the flight. Move, move! The best tank. That tank is the only way into Green's hive. It's the only way I'm gonna get Dana back. Now, before I talk about this mission in general, I might as well talk about what has just been said by Alex, and also the information that we've been given in terms of our objective. Now, our objective is to protect the thermal barrack tank, because it's going to help us take down the core hive, which is presumably the big building that we're trying to get into. We have to destroy the outlying hives before that time, 
which is what the thermal barrack tank is for. The thing is, Alex doesn't actually say the thermal barrack tank by its actual name. I don't think it's ever said by any character in terms of dialogue. Which is kind of odd. It shows that in ter um, the information that is given in the game is more for the player's benefit than it is for being used in the actual narrative of the story. Because there's a lot of other areas that it's sometimes not re even used. I don't think they even call the leader hunters leader hunters. They just say that these hunters are leaders. Now, of course, we're trying to protect this tank, because it can get killed pretty fast, um, especially in hard mode. The patrol around it can just be taken away really quickly, leaving only the Thermal Bear tank alone. And there are tons of hunters everywhere. But, let's see what this Thermal Bear tank can do. So, the Thermal Bear tank is the thing that can take down our wonderful hives that were indestructible before. They also drop a lot of wonderful hive genetic material, genetic material goodies. So yeah, we have to do this two more times before we can finally go over to the core hive. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, if you're not familiar, what is a thermobaric tank, and what does thermobaric actually mean? Well, a thermobaric weapon in general is a type of explosive that utilizes oxygen from the surrounding air to generate an intense, high-temperature explosion. And in practice, that blast wave makes a huge, bigger, and also longer explosion than a regular weapon will, like a regular missile. So that is kind of what is being shown in this game, and it's just so satisfying to you to see. Now, the first hive is really no big deal. It's the second hive that you're probably going to be running into some issues, because, especially in hard mode, chances are the tanks that are surrounding the uh, Thermobaric tank are probably gone at this point if you're not good and really that great. And also the helicopters are going to be on your butt instead. So if you're trying to get away from being shot yourself, don't go too far away from the Thermobaric tank, because if you leave the overall vicinity of it, it's actually going to be taking consistent damage from really nothing except for you being too far away from it. Which is kind of bull. Now, what makes the second hive different from the first? Apparently, they couldn't do with the first hive what they should be doing with the second hive. So we have to clear out the marked enemies, mainly hunters. Lots of hunters. Generally, it's not really that difficult, um, and I like using the shield in terms of armor more than the actual armor, because there's a lot more mobility with the shield, especially with dive rolling, because dive rolling is actually really good, especially when they're flurrying around. Devastators are also good because the ther Thermal Barrack tank gets well out of the way of the hive. You just have to be really careful that a hunter, like this one, won't get far too close to this guy. And you can also damage the tank yourself, so you better be prepared to get the enemy away from the tank before you attack the enemy. Because collateral damage and whatnot. Now, I would be using a helicopter, except that's not really, really helpful. It takes too long to get into a helicopter, and the targeting systems, in terms of fighting hunters in general, 
kind of um, suck in terms of how I've been able to effectively use them. And by effective, I mean not at all. There's just some last little tiny infected over here, which are good for consuming and getting some health back. The captain will never... You will avenge the captain one day, lowly marine. Where is that infected? Oh, he's on the wall over here, wiggling. Okay, so, are we all done? We're all done? We're good to go? Nope. One last enemy that we have to take care of, and he can be the most annoying because, guess what? He's a leader hunter. Yep. So, to be the most defensive offensive uh, strategy here, especially when this fight can take longer than necessary, the best way of taking care of the leader hunter is throwing things at him. So, take use of your muscle mass throw. Because that'll do the most amount of damage and get his attention before he goes over the tank. Because he's, you know how much health he can take away from you. He can take that much away from the tank as well. Throwing is definitely your best friend. There we go. We should be all good to go at this point. Or America, exactly. That's not what I meant to do. Um, I, not, I did not mean to ground spike the the tank at all. I just wanted to take care of the enemies around it. But yeah, that is it for number two. Number two is... It's weird how long number two can take. So let's get on to number three before something awful and terrible happens. It's gonna take a while before we actually get over there because, of course, we have to be escorting the tank. Indirectly, but still escorting it. This is where it gets a bit iffy in terms of getting hunters away from the tank. But that's what the hunter dirt nap is for, so you should be using it. It's also good, even though the helicopters are shooting at you directly sometimes, that it's good to keep a helicopter around. Air critical pain is also really good, because once you have the target of your enemy in question, it doesn't matter where they are. If it fires off and it makes contact, it will follow it. Which looks silly, but at least it'll still do the damage that it should. Hunters are so annoying, especially when you have to fight so many of them, but I guess at this point you should be able to get rid of them easily enough. Spin, car, spin! Another weird issue with the air critical pain, of course, is that when you're firing it and you're on the move, you're gonna be hovering in the air like some weird Jesus. You could be biological virus Jesus. Which doesn't sound like a good title at all. Uh, 
stupid guys. Get away. I want to do that to you. There we go. Nice bits. I shouldn't say something's ni bits are nice. That is that is a double entendre in both bad ways. Now, sure, you like using the blade a lot, but just remember that you have tons of other abilities that work fairly well. Now, do you remember what copperheads are? Is the question here. Because, again, this is not so something that the game actually calls the enemies by. It's all code names. Do that? Did you notice that guy flying into the air? That <laughs> cutscene, that's pretty great. But yeah, a Hydra just decided to thrust itself into the tank, which means we get to drive it! Oh, this is so fantastic. We get the best weapon in the game. Satisfying. So yes, this tank is the best tank. Why? Because you fire thermobaric weapons all the time, it kills everything, and it's pretty great. You don't get, sadly, you don't get to use it a lot, but, well, when you do, use it all the time, especially because the thermobaric weapon is what is infinite in our disposal. Another difference with um, hardcore mode, though, or not hardcore, just hard, is that when we were actually shooting at that hive, it took two shots in order to take it down. And hey, Hydras are back! Hello! You are completely useless other than for plot contrivances. But you know what? This is a good plot contrivance because we get to just like live out destructive fantasy. It's pretty great. To be honest, I don't even want to just shoot the building. I just want to shoot all the infected that are coming after me. Hydras, the hunters, come on! I want more enemies, please! To shoot and kill in a single hit and give me tons of EP that I don't need. It's pretty great. But we need to get in there anyways, so. And that is the end of the mission. We're in. Not really much for me to say because we're going to be jumping right into the next mission next time. So I'll see you next time, everyone, as we go in. Hopefully find Dana and nothing bad will happen. See you next time, everyone. Now, living in New York City is ex expensive, I get that, but hell, no, I'm not ever paying that amount. Never. Even for these specific condos that are right above us, that is not enough money to warrant buying a condo here, even if it's in right across the street from Central Park. Uh, then again, I do wish I could buy one of those, or at least rent it. money.